It feels good to be home. Uh, especially after spending a couple years in Washington, D.C., where they think that Barack Obama is a socialist. <laughs> is a Republican. Thank you, KPFA. Thank you, KPFA. Um, I want to talk about my book because, you know, it's genius. It's amazing. I want to take some time because I've been gone for a while. And I want to thank KPFA. Uh, we're here for them. And uh, many of you, and we Growing up together, many of us in this room, I see a lot of friends. Um, it was KPFA in 1995 when Mark N. Dye, notorious, brutal police officer, gun, did gun down, he, he, he beat, stomped, and pepper sprayed to death Aaron Williams in 1995. Mark N. Dye had already shot to death an unarmed black man. He had 32 uh, allegations of police brutality against him, five lawsuits, one of the worst police officers on the force, still there, still there in 1995. And the only media outlet that would take him on was KPFA. And at that time, I was just a recent uh, law school graduate, uh, had uh, little baby dreadlocks. You remember. <laughs> had a, a green turtleneck and a green blazer and that was a hundred percent of my wardrobe <laughs> and, um, and and they let me get on the, on the air with Aaron's family 1995 and we built up one of the biggest police brutality campaigns in the history of the country not only did we get rid of Mark and Dyer, we got rid of the entire San Francisco Police Commission that was protecting brutal officers like Mark and Dyer. Thank you, KPFA. All the way back to 1995, I remember in 2000, coming out of that campaign, we had built up the Ella Baker Center for Human Rights. Really, based on that campaign, the KPFA helped us experience. Again, I was just right out of law school. And they, they, they invested in me, they gave me that opportunity, they gave me that microphone, and we built up the Ella Baker Center. And then it turned out that uh, in Alameda County, they were going to build a super jail for children in Oakland. And it was going to not only be a super jail, it was going to be on the other side of the county from Oakland. And the jail they were proposing to build was going to be bigger than the juvenile hall in Cook County, Chicago, which is, I think, five or six times bigger. But the jail was going to be even bigger than that. They were just going to have suction black, brown, and poor kids out of Oakland and stick them in that monument to racism and brutality. And nobody would do anything about it. And it was KPFA that let us get on the air, and we started a campaign called Books Not Bars that not only stopped... I just want you to remember what this community has done. And I'm just one actor. You can have any activists in the Bay Area up here. I just want to tell my story and give my testimony and my thanks to KPFA. Because it was KPFA that continued to let us get back on the air and back on the air and talk about it. And not only did we stop the super jail, but Books Not Bars, as a part of the Ella Baker Center, has gone on in alliance with other groups to close four youth prisons in this state and cut the youth population in California's prisons by 30%. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I remember in 2005 when an American city 
drowned and the president was missing in action. I remember Katrina. I remember watching African American grandmamas on rooftops. I remember them flooding into that stadium and being in the richest country in the history of the world that was moving troops and personnel all around the world but couldn't put a drop of water on the tongue of an infant right down there in New Orleans. I remember the heartbreak. And I remember there was one station that continued to lift up the voices of the people who were suffering and insist on justice and who helped us launch a little thing called colorofchange.org. And when we launched that organization, me and James Rucker, James Rucker, African American brother that just left moveon.org, uh, we had about 3,000 emails between us. But we used that to try to get help for people and we got on KPFA. That little colorofchange.org organization now has almost one million members. It's the biggest online African-American advocacy organization in the world. Thank you, KPFA.
elk. So color a change, little local group, they got his first big boost from KPFA, nobody else will give us any attention. Uh, now with almost a million members, said enough is enough. And they exposed him and went after him, and all these big corporations that have been behind the scenes, once you open up that refrigerator door, <laughs> Ooh, yeah. they went Pepsi and Coke and they went scampering, and uh, 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 I forget how much money that they lost, uh, Alec is now uh, uh, promising that they're not going to put out any more of these uh, nasty laws. Of course, they're lying, but they're forced to lie because of color of change. Thank you, KPFA. You have the power. We have some power. And the last thing I just want to say is I remember uh, back at the Ella Baker Center when I was there. And uh, Ali Starr was there and a number of people who were here. And we started thinking about what we were going to do with these young folks who were coming home from prison, coming home from jail. See, the worst thing in the world isn't to lose a campaign. It's to win a campaign and realize that your victory doesn't get you what you want. See, we started winning these campaigns. We stopped the super jail. We started closing some of these youth prisons. And we saw the young people come home for about six weeks, turn right back around, heading off to the adult system. Why? No jobs. No jobs. And we started saying, well, what can we do? And luckily, California had passed some laws to, to make the solar industry take off. And we noticed that uh, folks were wanting those solar panels on their houses in California. And so there was consumer demand, and the policies were there, and the entrepreneurs were there, and the, the, the technology was there, and there were no solar panels going up. Because solar panels don't put themselves up. Nobody had thought to train the workers. Yeah. And so people were ordering solar panels, and it would be three months, six months, and we said, well, hold on a second. You got all this work that needs to be done in the solar industry. We got some young people in Oakland and other places who need some work. Can we take these people who most need work and connect them to the work that most needs to be done, repowering America with clean energy, and fight pollution and poverty at the same time, you see? And we came on KPFA and we started talking about green jobs. Green jobs, not, j not jails. I work with Ali Starr. We did this uh, UN World Environment Day in 2005. KPFA broadcast almost everything that we did and got this tremendous momentum behind us. In 2007, the Oakland City Council passed something called the Green Jobs Corps. A guy named Ian Kim worked on that. And it wound up finally connecting the dots. A woman by the name of Nancy Pelosi, uh, who apparently lives across the bridge somewhere <laughs> from Oakland, found out about it. And she got excited. And she came to the Ella Baker Center. And she took us by the hand in Washington, D.C. And we got a law called the Green Jobs Act passed, signed by George W. Bush as a part of the 2007 Energy Bill to, to, to train young people in green jobs. Now, of course, in 2008, George Bush refused to fund it. But in 2008, President Obama put half a billion dollars into that program, and there are people across the country, especially in places like Detroit, in places like Indiana, who've been trained to uh, not only put up solar panels, but to build wind turbines and to move green jobs forward. We haven't done all that we want to do, but the green jobs movement and its impact on the environmental movement and on racial justice started on the airway with KPFA. So thank you, KPFA. You know, if we didn't have this station, think about it now. I know we all bust and fight and have 12 different factions about the cable. <laughs> you know, and it's the Bay Area, I understand it. <laughs> but there's a reason we're so passionate about this station. And there's a reason that the people in Pacifica need to listen to the voice of the people here and take your hands off this station and let the voice of the people be heard.